good afternoon. I got a few moments to spare. So we're going to walk. Get some steps in. Naturally, I went to sleep late. I think it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, maybe 2. Woke up at 5. Went back to sleep. Woke up at 6. Stayed up. Of course, the cat woke me up. The oldest one. Um, Dad's at the doctor right now. He's better at the doctor than... It's a nice little setup. I like how it got up there. And that one's covered for the rain. I like this. I like this park. Anyway, it's better than he's there than instead of the hospital. I thought surely they were going to put him in the hospital today, but that surgeon opened up, opened him up in the room again without telling him. And uh, after he realized he was having a lot of pain, then he brought the, the numbing medication as an afterthought. <laughs> and this time he got him to sign a waiver, a consent form after the fact to cover his ass. <laughs> I'm like, I wouldn't have signed it. I'm like, it's a little bit too late for that. For one, you didn't tell me you are going to op open me up. You didn't use your words. <laughs> and for two, it was already done. What's the point? I know. Cover your ass. No lawsuit. I get it. Yeah, they opened him up this time. After he was digging and poked all the way through, made it deeper. Or really to see how deep it went. Yeah, it's, it's down there, and he thinks both of the abscesses are connecting to each other. And we kept having this debate about whether it was cancer or it wasn't. I thought they got this 11-centimeter tumor, that mass that had grown inside of his colon, burst it through the walls and was making him bleed internally. And... Uh, yeah, they cut it out, but they said it was good news, great, there was no cancer, and they got it all out. And, but now they're saying it is cancer, and, you know, so he's got to do the chemo because it was so large, unusually large. And then we find out his first GI had been giving him Ramadine, which is really Zantac, and that it's been recalled a few years ago um, yet his GI gave him this and then his PC his, uh, his physician his general physician doubled it <laughs> so he don't know if that caused cancer but yeah, and this was after it had been recalled and everything, but I don't, I don't understand why they were still dispensing it or prescribing it after it's been recalled by the CDC. So, there's that. He might be getting a lawyer. <sighs> there might be a lawsuit. So we got to do a, and I had caught this second infection last Monday, and I kept telling him about it, telling his doctor, nobody want to listen to me. It could be a mass, it could be just, you know, your stomach, uh, I don't know how they worded it, but you know, they weren't worried about it until I kept pestering them, and I'm like, nope, it's an infection, nope, 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 it's, it's another infection. I knew it was. But 
I guess nobody listened to me because I don't have a medical degree, although I've worked in the medical field as a phlebotomist. I was under doctor supervision and I had this medical degree, but it wasn't actually mine. It was, uh, <laughs> it was my aunt's and it wasn't really valid because she had a class action lawsuit against the Texas School of Business because the students taught themselves. There were no teachers in the class, but they graduated the whole class. Well, the whole class ended up having a class action lawsuit against them and won. <clears throat> Yet the Texas School of Business is still in business. Yeah. So, there's a university housing. University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. Got some nice housing. Anyway. So yeah, I, technically I have no degree in, <laughs> in the medical field, even though I worked as a phlebotomist. That's another story. Anyway, um, so it it that other infection it 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 his body reacted to it and it caused another opening above his his uh, belly button. And we went to the doctor, the his surgeon this morning. He opened him up in the office again. And uh, he irrigated it, tried to take as much of that infection out and drainage out as he could. And gave me some more, another work duty. Uh, it's another month extension. Um, now I've got two hoes to change and these are wounds are the kind that you got to pack that you have to pack so uh darn it i forgot it if it the bottom one's supposed to be dry so i think the top one's wet yeah i might have to ask that again uh, sh i should have recorded it so i could have remembered but that other hole is big. The, I thought the other one was deep and big because I was packing it with the gauze. And it was like six to eight inches deep. But once you twist that gauze and, and make it like a, not like a string, but a, you know, compact it and push it in there. It'd go about halfway, those four by four gauzes. But this one, he stuck two whole 4x4 four four gauzes in that thing. And I'm like, darn, I got to do that. It just gives me the heebie-jeebies. And instead of asking Miss him, he's like, are you all right? Are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. Why you keep asking me this? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm being quiet. I'm not doing anything. Why she keep asking, am I doing something? No, I'm not doing nothing. Why she, she needs to leave me alone. Anyway, um... Yeah, so now I've got two wounds to irrigate and pack. And Thursday we're going to get a, a cat CT scan. And we're supposed to pick up some antibiotics today. I'm glad they're finally doing the scan because I wanted that scan from the first infection to make sure the surgery went well and he didn't do nothing to... Or that it j something bad didn't happen. I wanted to know. Well, finally, after the second abscess or whatever, now they're, they're going to get it. Which I wish they would have did it the first time. But now we'll have it Thursday and see how that goes. So he's got to fast for that one. And they're going to do it with contrast and dye. Plus, uh, make them drink th those two bottles of that milky substance. I forget what it is. I have it, but I'm not looking right now. They make you drink this milky, chalky substance, and they try to add these flavorings, but the flavoring don't work. It's just... And if you're already sick, that just upsets your stomach even more if you have any uh, GI issues. Yeah, it's not good. It's 
It makes you sick. And then you got to hold down that medication for... I forgot if it was 30 minutes to up to 2 hours before they can do the scan. Plus so they'll hook them up with the IV and do the contrast and all that. So we'll do that Thursday. Yeah, take it as it goes. Um, so yeah, there's that. And on a side note... You know, I don't have time for television right now, or really anything, but once in a while when I have a few minutes or I'm killing some time, I'll watch these YouTube videos, and sometimes I'll watch, because it, it's just hilarious, you never can tell what this person's going to say, you know, it's like, <laughs> what lie they're going to come up with next, <laughs> I'm going to be pregnant for 11 months. <laughs> I'm like, if anybody tells you they want you to go two months over your due date, I'd get a second opinion and question my doctor. I would just change doctors immediately. But it's the delusion. I, I, I understand that. The one thing they want is to give birth or to have that child to love you unconditionally. You know... For some women, it's, you know, just mothering. Uh, and for the women who can't do it, some don't feel like a woman. Um, the one thing they want that every woman is supposed to do and might take for granted, they can give birth, give life to another being to nurture, to hold, to mentor. Obviously this person really wants a child. And it's called a phantom pregnancy, a presudio pregnancy, where they start the lie and then they start believing the lie. That person needs help. Psychological help. That's definitely a guardian, caseworker, a legal guardian. Power of attorney doesn't do nothing. <laughs> it just lets you handle legal matters. But once these delusions come in, it's either part of a scam or they need some mental help and I just see that crazy look well I wanted to reach out and help my heart keeps telling me to help 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 but I'm leery because this person isn't always right And I don't need to get mixed up with people who are not right. I don't need to be bringing you are the company you keep. Uh, they'll bring you down. Now, people who live in Greens Point don't live there by choice, usually. Um, it's an income issue. Ever since they murdered this uh, female sh sheriff's deputy. They murdered her. I forgot if she was shot, stabbed, both. But I know one thing. They set her on fire in her sheriff's deputy vehicle, patrol unit. They set it all on fire in Greens Point Mall one day. And ever since then, they've called it Guns Point. It's a bad neighborhood, shady neighborhood, or as they say, a less desired zip code. Well, I don't want to judge the people who live in that neighborhood, but the company she's keeping right now, 
they need help. You know. And when you know better, you do better. And nobody's perfect. Everybody has faults. Nobody believes anybody's perfect. That It just doesn't happen. But to put someone else's faults up and talk about them after you left them is inappropriate. You don't need to put all your business out there. I don't understand that. And when you lie, you've got to have a good memory so you can keep up with your lies. It's really hard. I wanted to show her how to find some stability, some security, a place of her own. Instead of going around begging for money, then getting mad when they don't give you money and then talk shit. She'll have to make some sacrifices. And with her disability, whether it's physic physical or mental, she can do that. They've got HUD housing, and supposedly she signed up for it. Granted, there is a waiting list. It can be a year long, up to years long, you know, or a few years long. But I will say this, you'll have to sacrifice. You have to get rid of the company you keep and be by yourself. You have to go stay in a shelter. Any shelter will do. And in those shelters, they're like dormitories. You get to meet friends. You'll make a few friends, hopefully. And you'll have a caseworker to help you and guide you. Now, the quick way to get HUD housing is to go to a shelter. If you are in a shelter for 30 days, they will put you at the top of the list provided you have children or are disabled. 30 days. 30 days, Shanae. 30 days. That's, that's all it's going to take for 30 days you go to one of Houston's shelters for women. Be truthful. Tell them you're in transition. You're in between places. You have no place, no family that you can count on or for support. And once you've been at that shelter for 30 days, you go back to housing. Once you get in there and then 30 days after you update them. And along with your caseworker, they will help you get a place. A place that will be on a sliding scale to your, you know, with your income. It'll go by your income. If you do that for 30 days, they will help you. It might not be immediately. But it will be within a few months. But all it requires is 30 days and you get a jump start. You need to be by yourself for a year. And just love yourself. The past is the past. Once you put it behind you. I mean, I really don't like to talk about it. Especially in a negative matter. I don't want to be rude. Because Lord knows I made a lot of mistakes. I was that ex shit show, train wreck, whatever you want to call it. But once I knew better, I did better. And it took me a long time. I see my therapist once a month. Oh, and I got two psychologists, so girl. <laughs> 
We all got issues, some more than others. But life is an adventure, and it's what you make of it. Granny, when she was with Freddie, um, the man loved her. He had his faults, but then so did she. You know, the only as an outsider looking in, there were things she wasn't able to give him as a wife. And you can't fault her or him. People are human. We are weak. And then there's temptation. So maybe he strayed, but he always loved you and he took care of you. Nobody took care of you like Freddie. And I don't mean financially. That man made sure you took care of your medical needs. He loved you. And he didn't talk bad about you. No matter how upset you got him or anything. He didn't say the things that he could have. Like you are. And I get it. You're upset. You're hurting. When we speak in anger. It's because we're hurting. But just like he had faults you did. He might have been materialistic as you say. But that was his thing. Your thing was food. You know, tit for tat. Was it wrong for him to be materialistic? Was it wrong for you to get to 780 pounds? I'm not here to judge. I just want to understand and help you find a solution. I'm a native Houstonian. Born and raised. Well, native means that. <laughs> not like native Houstonian, Indian Houstonian. No, I'm not that. I just born and raised and this is where I live. And Houston has big hearts. It's almost like there would be no reason to stay here if all your family is in Indy. Unless it's because... Houston pays like a, you know, pays like a check. If you're in need, they will pay. They will pay. And who doesn't like free rent? <laughs> we all wish we could have free rent. But I, I don't know how that saying goes, but they said if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a life. So... You make that sacrifice. Go to a shelter. 30 days. And they'll put you at the top of the list. Your caseworker will help you find a place of your own. Yeah, I just, I, I just have this vision that... Uh, she hasn't read her, reached her rock bottom yet. This is not rock bottom yet. Somebody always is there to save her. While she's cussing everybody out, somebody's always there to save her so far. Darling, one day that's going to come to an end. And uh, you're going to end up in the hospital, and Freddie's not going to be there to catch you. Matter of fact, none of the company you have right now right there at your side is going to be able to catch you like Freddie did. That man loved you. You know. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be put your pride aside and go to a shelter and get that over with. Meanwhile, hopefully dad recovers from cancer. He doesn't want to do chemo. 
But that's what we got to do. Or that's what he's got to do. And in a few minutes, I got to pick him back up. And then go about my day. I still got to pick up his prescription. And some other things. But, yeah. So, pass the word along. Houston has a lot of resources. You go to a shelter for 30 days. You can get into that housing. They'll put you at the top of the list. And naturally, for children and people with disabilities, it runs a little faster. Patience is a virtue. Anyway, I hope everyone has a great day and is doing well. Peace, love, and happiness. Adios. Sayonara. Arrivederci. Cheers. Ciao.